Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the NS9 post-game show, the hodgepodge of nothingness. I'm your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, we got Jim Rosati. Can we make this really, really short and sweet? I would love, I would love that to be the case. The Pirates lose 14. It's a one and a four. 14 to two. Two touchdowns. The Steelers get a safety. This is pathetic. This is pathetic. Just all around pathetic. But I feel like literally everybody, and that's not like really an overstatement. Rodolfo Castro, Cabrian Hayes, is pretty much the only ones that did anything worth a damn. We can talk about Rowan Z. I mean, in the terms of strikeouts, Rowan Z did something that many starting pitchers don't do. But when you face about 10 batters an inning, you can probably strike out 10 in four innings. So anyways, uh, yeah, Roman Z Contreras gets to start today, goes 4.2, gives up six earned on six hits, two walks, a grand slam, 10 strikeouts. It wasn't a good day for him, even though, again, like you look at the 10 strikeouts and you think, wow, that's amazing in 4.2 innings, but he just simply wasn't getting guys out. Yeah, he actually got he actually got ten strikeouts in. We had nine, I think, in three point one, and then yeah, I mean, he was striking out a ton of people there at the beginning of the game. Um, No, it's nice to see the strikeouts, but obviously his problem today was just too many people were hitting him. (laughs) So I mean, you gotta uh, he gave up a he gave up a home run. the grand slam home run uh, and then couldn't get out of the fifth inning. So there were some things to like about his start for sure, but definitely not his sharpest. By any means. Definitely not. But it, like it was an ironic start from him because he did have a lot of swing and miss stuff. I mean, there, there was a reason why there's 10 strikeouts and I'll be it again. Like, I mean, it, it makes sense. It adds up when you face that mm-hmm. many batters, you're going to be able to strike more people out in terms of right. case per nine, right, in that sense. But, I mean, he had 44% whiff rate. And at one point, it was like 58%, I think, into the fourth inning. So, I mean, guys weren't connecting with him unless they were, if that makes sense. Right. And he and just, again, were, like wasn't were. attacking the inside at all. Yeah, when they were, they were. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. But, you know, in terms, like, he threw the slider the majority of his time. I mean, it's pretty much slider, four-seamer, but the slider, 42%. I'm sorry, the slider, 42 times, four-seamer, 39 times. But 12 whiffs on the slider, five on the four-seam, and he threw his curveball six times, two whiffs. So, again, 19 swing and misses from the New York Yankees. I mean, that's, that is impressive, but six earned runs and 4.2 as well, and a grand slam in the first inning. Yeah, not, not his best start. But, uh, I mean, to be honest, that it doesn't even scratch the surface to, you know, how embarrassing the, the game was all around. Just a carryover from last night. Yeah. Like, eight innings was very entertaining, productive. Will Crow comes in, doesn't give up an out, and allows five earned. And then a carryover today, Rowan only gives up two outs, four earned. <laughs> So, like, in a batter of two outs, the Pirates gave up, like, nine straight runs. Since yeah, I mean, there were two grand slams Two hit grand slams. In a two-out span. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, carry from last night wasn't too well. Didn't start off well. And then it got worse. You would think a grand slam to open up the game, 4 nothing. It's about as bad as it's going to get. Nope. Nope. Sorry, kids. We got worse for you. Yeah, I mean, this bullpen, 
this bullpen's just flat out awful. It's like the way that it is presently constructed, probably the worst bullpen I've ever seen. Um, you know, Chase DeYoung comes in and pitches an inning of in a third of the most lowest leverage, you know, innings you could pitch in a baseball game. Uh, Yohore comes in, gets shelled. Stout comes in, gets shelled. This team is just – and it's like, who else are you going to put out there? Because whoever else you're going to put out there is just going to get shelled. They're all, they're all terrible. This whole bullpen is awful. It is. It is. There's not one. There's not one in it right now that you can rely on, be confident in, nope. say not a they're even person. at least okay. Because it, I, again, like I feel like Will Crow, the one who you think should, is just at the point of the season now where it, he's done. He's done. You're not. You're not going to get a productive Will Crow the rest of the year. No, he's done. The Pirates have just used so many innings from these relievers that they're they're out. They're done. The, Chase the Young still going. I'll, I get. I guess. Give you that. Chase the Young is the one I'm most confident in. Doesn't say Which much, but you that's the yeah. guy. And then when they tried to put him in a closer's role the other day, he blew it too. Right. It's just so bad. So, like, I'm going to ask this question. Nothing to do with the post game, but I'm going to present this question. Do you even want to see David Bednar back this year? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm you have to. <laughs> like I know I need I need to see I need to see somebody that like I don't want to just like strangle out there on the mound. And I feel like Bednar could at least provide me with that. He should. Hopefully. It's like this is so bad that I've I've never like it doesn't matter who they put in. They're terrible. They're all they're all terrible. But think who's left. That's the thing like when you made the trade for Horderman, and I know how you felt about the trade, but regardless, when you made the trade for Horderman, you saw potential in a reliever. You saw a guy you can slide in now. So it's like, hey, at least there's getting bullpen help because the relievers were terrible to begin with, right? So it's like, at least you're starting to find – Charrington's finding ways to add to this bullpen and it's starting today. De Los Santos comes up. You get Horderman in. Bednar's already there. Crow's pitching well. De Young's pitching well. And like they all go down, they all go out. I mean, that doesn't help, but right. But you're left with absolutely nothing. Like these guys are just terrible to begin with. Literally everyone. Your hurry is like I'm just I mean, I already was, right? But like I'm just completely done with him. He's just not a good pitcher at all. There's no intrigue, there's nothing there. No, done with him. Done. (laughs) Done with Eric Stout. I just, I mean, I, mean, I, I just was... went through real quick because I, I mean, I just tweeted out, you know, towards the end of the game, I was like, le- like legit half this active roster, I don't want to see again, like ever again, like I want them DFA'd right now, and I went through and I, you know, 14, 14 people on the active roster, I do not want to see their face anymore. <laughs> I counted them, like, and yeah. a lot of them are pitchers, but yeah. That's half the half of the active roster. I do not want to see ever again. That's how bad this team is right now. Twelve more games, Jim. Twelve more games. And here's the other thing. I'm just going to say this because it's annoying the hell out of me. One of the people I said I don't want to see again is Michael Chavis. I'm done. I don't care. Don't want to see Michael Chavis ever again. Wow. Anybody wow. who's saying Damn. they want to keep Michael Chavis, your standards are so low. <laughs> like we're talking about a first he he literally only plays first base. Well, right now. He's, he's, a, forced to. he's a first baseman. He's hitting 234. He's got a 268 on base percentage and he's slugging 396. If that's what you want out of your first baseman, I don't know what to tell you. It's unacceptable. Like it's un he's it's <laughs> unacceptable for a baseball team to trot out Michael Chavis as their everyday first baseman. That is the problem. And again, this this goes to the the whole Diego Castillo yesterday, right? Making the terrible play in the outfield. Well, it's not his fault. He is what he is. And like for Michael Chavis, he is what he is. And like I'll make that argument for you. I have no issue if he's back next year, but he's going to be back. 
as a bench bat who faces lefties. Like, that's it. He's totally exposed because he has to be an everyday player right now. And I want him to be an everyday player because if he's not an everyday player, then who the hell is playing first base defensively? That's a construction issue, not a Michael Chavis issue. Like, he is what he is. And it's funny that, like, I'm making the argument for Chavis right now and, and you're not because, again, like, two, three months ago, the whole Gabby Sanchez versus Michael Chavis argument we had going on and everything. But, like, he is what he is. And I'm okay if he's back to be that player. He can be an asset if he's facing just lefties. He can play decent first base. We see it enough. He can play second, right? There's a DH. Like, he can find ways to get his bat in there minimally or off the bench to face a lefty. I'm cool with that. But that's the problem. I'd rather have he's Diego not. Castillo. I'd rather have Diego Castillo if that's mm. what he's going to do. So that's that's fair. That's fair. That's an argument to be had. They're the same player. That's the thing. Like they're they're the same player. Yeah. It's just so bad. I it's might Ross feel like Chavis is, is better defensively. Ross <laughs> is so bad. But anyways, anyways, it is bad. And we're at the the nitty gritty. The end of the year. It's just I don't know, man. Hey, I guess. If there's one thing from the night, Aaron Judge didn't hit a home run. There's one takeaway. True. I guess he made some Yankees fans. Well, no, they're definitely happy that they won 14 to two, but that's another thing. That no, they're wanted. not. Here, here's another thing too. Like they wanted the home run. I also don't care. Like the home run record is 73. Who cares about this? It's still I'm, not gonna get, I'm not going to get excited I, I get about what you're saying. He's like the eighth most home runs in MLB history. Like, what, what's that? Who cares? Don't I? I know. I, I don't care. I get that, but I'll tell you this: if you're a Yankee fan, you would. If I was a Yankees fan, I would hate myself. If. If the Pirates got regulated to the AL <laughs> and O'Neill Cruz was up the bat about to get his home run record, right? 61, you would care. I think what makes me more upset about all of this is, is like, I actually really like Aaron Judge. Same. Like, I think he's awesome. But like, Yankees fans, I hate. I hate them so much. They're a terrible fan base. And like, I don't want them to experience any joy whatsoever. So it like forces me to like downplay Aaron Judge's achievements. He's having just an absolutely bonkers, incredible offensive season. Um, But like, it almost makes me, I have to downplay it now because, you know, I can't give them any credit. See, I don't know. I could care less about that. I mean, you're correct that Yankees fans are terrible. And the funny thing is, I'm sure there's Yankee fans watching this, um, if, if not now, <laughs> later. So screw you people. No, I'm joking. But anyways, yeah. like I don't care enough about that. Aaron Judge is awesome. He's amazing. Yeah. I love, love the guy, and I'm rooting for him. And like so be it. And honestly, if he did hit 61 tonight, like so be it. Because this team is just so awful. I, I agree. So be it. Because you know what? It doesn't matter. 61's what, well, tie, him for, tie him for eighth best ever. <laughs> The participation trophy generation. But for real, like it, it just would have been whatever. You know what? Honestly, this team is so bad. They deserved it. I mean, they gave up 14 runs. I'm I'm shocked Judge didn't have a home run. <laughs> yeah. But he did have two doubles. But Aaron Judge not hitting a home run is more of a shock than hitting a home run. So all right. Rosie, no good. The bullpen's terrible. Getting to the offense. Starts off with Cruz. Starts off with Cruz getting another walk. Uh, walk at that point in time. Pitch. So at he... that point in time. Well, I was going to say, at that point in time, he had four walks and six at bats. Yeah. Impressive. Also had the hardest hit baseball of the game 110.1, I think yeah. it was. 
So there we go. Exit Velo, baby. No, but you know who uh, didn't? Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Yeah. But no, I think overall, I mean, he didn't get a hit. I think he went a total of he went over four this series, but got on yes. base five times. So yep. over four, four walks and a hit by pitch. So I mean, we'll take I guess a five fifty five. 556 on base percentage, right? It would have been nice to see him get a hit or a home run, like going up against Judge. Like that would have been cool. But um, yeah, he only had four at bats. Yankees were Yankees were more scared of Cruz. Like I think you tweeted out, Yankees more scared of facing Cruz than the Pirates were facing Judge this series. They really were. I mean, yes, they definitely stood out. Uh, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, they just didn't want really much to do with. And think about it. How many times I, I know of two. There could have been more, so I don't want to make this sound more than it really was. But like how often was he down 0-2 or one two and then end up walking? Because it was yeah. just ball, ball, ball. And he laid off of it. So good for him also. But um he he just I don't know, man. Again, like I understand he didn't get a hit. He did have three K's. But the at bats to just keep looking better and better and better. Still stuff to work on. He looked silly today with the lefty up there. Um, but ultimately, again, four four walks in this two game series from O'Neill Cruz. When we had people like Mark Madden and a lot of people talking, when he had one walk in his first fifty plate appearances, right? And now he has four in seven. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even today. I mean, it's technically a, a 127 weighted runs created plus just today. You know, and you didn't have a hit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, no hits. It would have been really cool. And it's Yankee Stadium. Like, he should just be hitting. He would have 62 home runs right now as well if he was in Yankee Stadium. But, but yeah, it would have been cool. And the whole judge thing, right? Judge, Cruz together, right? There's the big comps and such. But it doesn't happen. Either way, let's get the Rod- Rodolfo Castro. Right, this garbage player who's terrible, who's just on a tear again, still going. He goes two for four today with a double. I'm sorry, with a triple and a single. Which the triple it played off the well, the wall well. So it gave him an yeah. advantage. He he gets a triple out of it. Um but hey, two hits, he gets two runs. He's still going, man. Yeah, I mean, he was basically the offense today. Um, and he was out there hustling, like sliding in the third head first, sliding the home on the Zach Fly head first. So, like, I mean, I, I don't – like anybody who's saying that, like, he's his attitude or his – the way he plays the game, like the dude is out there balling out. Uh, another great game today. Really good series in New York. <sighs> I, I, I put it out today. Like the guy has more home runs since his call up than any other second baseman in major league baseball. Um, he's, he's just playing really, really well right now. And and it's exciting to see him play. Like he's, he is one of the only bright spots on this team. Like there are a lot of things you can complain about right now about the current Pittsburgh pirates. Rodolfo Castro should not be one of them by any means. Like he deserves some credit for what he's doing right now because he's really showing out. Right. It's it's the entire package. And I understand there's stuff that can frustrate you. And it's it's true. And it's noteworthy. Yes, it, it is there. But I'll say something, and I don't think you heard this because I know you you kind of came later, or whatever, but they talked about the beginning about Sean. Sean had a talk from last night, apparently, with that the hit. The home run that barely clear, barely cleared, and I'll tell you what, like well, the way Shelton said it, and I fully agree. Like, it's like, listen, you can't do that. But at the same time, I don't want to take his excitement, and enthusiasm away. And like, I feel that. Like, there are just some. Like, he is that guy who he has his mentality. He's gonna be fun. He's gonna be a little centric. You you need to bring that too. Like, that is a personality. You want to keep their personality, but also at times check it. And I felt like that's what Shelton did. Like, okay, listen, that wasn't the time, but keep being you. I respect that. Like, that's what you, that's what I want him to hear. And I'm glad to hear that Shelton did talk to him about it, and he talked to him in that way. 
so cool. Like, but that's what, I, like, that's what you want to see. That's the growth. Again, this is also a rookie. He's inexperienced. This is part of that. But when you look at the play and the performance, what are you complaining about? And again, two more hits tonight. I mean, this guy is just a completely different player since his last recall, which was August 9th. The, the baseline just keeps growing, right? The, the sample size keeps growing. Two more hits tonight. Again, I don't know what he's going to be. I'm not going to compare O'Neill Cruz and Rodolfo Castro to Acuna and Albias, but like the potential of those two Albias are sky high. I get it. But at the same time, like the tools you see out of Castro, they're just, they're all there. They're all there. Yeah, no, I mean, we've said it a bajillion times. Like, all the tools are, are there. Um, it's it's exciting to watch them play baseball. And so far, so good. So let's just see how he does. Just keep watching. Just keep there's only, watching. There's 12 more games and it's over. There's, there aren't too many people worth watching right now on this team, but he's one of them. He is. He's one of them. He absolutely mm-hmm. is. Cruz himself. And then I feel like Reynolds, Reynolds. He, 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 he has these streaks. And That's I'm going to say went over four, but yesterday he like was a beast. But yeah, like it's really those three offensively. And that, that's literally it. Slowinski isn't doing anything. Mitchell's really cooled off since his first, what, like 10 games we talked about, seven games, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Gamble's gamble, right? Now Hayes is. Hayes isn't as bad. Like I'll say, since coming back from injury, he's gotten a little bit better. Uh, you said Casho was the offense. Hayes is who drove in Casho each time as well. One was mm-hmm. a sack fly. The other one was an actual hit. Um, so we had two RBIs today going one for two. Uh, so I, I, I will say Hayes is coming around, but he's not like must-see TV. Casho's exciting. Cruz is exciting. Reynolds is exciting. But those are the three guys that you're really watching. And, hey, there's, that's one through three in the lineup pretty much every single day. Yeah. And then, and then it's it. Good night. Wake me up in two more innings when one through three is up again. That's pretty much where we're at right now. And then also, I don't want to watch anybody in the bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> no. So turn off 4.2 innings into the game. Yeah. Basically. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know what else to really say about this game. That's pretty much it. Wanted to talk about Castro and Hayes offensively. Ronzi for his outing, which was a mix, but it was still bad, ultimately. Uh, that's it. Yep. All right. I don't have anything else to say. Well, then I guess we'll leave it with this. So tomorrow they do play the Cubs. It's a 635 game, so it's a little bit earlier. It's Mitch Keller day. So this is this is must see TV. Yeah, this is Keller must-see starts. TV. Keller starts are are good starts to watch. And it's facing the Cubs, so and they suck. You love to watch people beat up on the Cubs. Hopefully the Pirates can do so. But yeah, Mitch Keller day uh, currently at a four point oh three ERA. He did go under it last start, and then of course crept over it when he got there and run. But um, yeah, Mitch Keller. I guess we'll leave it there. We'll see you back tomorrow. Is that it, Jim? That's it. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it for all you Yankees fans. It's not to see you again. <laughs> but good luck to Aaron Judge. And uh, we'll see you guys. Good tomorrow. luck to Aaron Judge. Hopefully the Yankees lose first round of the playoffs. There you go. I'll take that. Bye-bye. <laughs>